welcome to the next video in the in the last video we are learned regarding the different techniques of the TLC okay uh, like adsorption partition reverse phase okay and different terms used like RF uh, then RM RX values okay in uh, today's uh, video we will see the different concepts of the TLC that is uh, the choosing or the selection of the stationary phase selection of the stationary phase okay so what is uh, here used is uh, the main here is uh, we have to see the nature of the analyte okay so nature of the analyte this is what important okay so <clears throat> my basic uh, acidic or uh, neutral so what uh, is being used uh, so that is uh, the important here to know the nature okay so the reactivity or the chemical reaction of the sample uh, with the stationary phase okay uh, should be, uh, should not be uh, so reactive so whatever we are using the stationary phase so the should not be so much reactive with the stationary phase so this is what the nature of analyte uh, is very much important either it is a basic neutral or or uh, base or uh, the acidic okay now if you see uh, the third point here the characteristic of the compound so uh, for the characteristic of the compound this also very much basic thing characteristic of compound okay like nature of analytes characteristic of compound is also important whether it is carbohydrates or amino acids okay or uh, glycosides etc so this knowledge is also very much uh, necessary before we are going for the tlc on a stationary phase is it then uh, the fourth point uh, is very important here is the solubility of the compound or the sample solubility of the compound or the sample this also is very much uh, uh, important okay so we should know the solubility of this uh, uh, of uh, of the compound or sample analyte which we are interested to run on this stationary phase so this also is very much uh, important parameter okay now the some of the inorganic uh, some of the inorganic adsorbents used for in tlc is uh, silica gel the most important is the silica gel okay that is uh, sio2 silica gel okay is uh, sio2 and uh, uh, it is named uh, uh, is a silica uh, sio2 uh, uh, depending or due to the presence of uh, silenol okay this is uh, what it is present with this group silenol group so it may be acidic in nature so uh, if you see uh, there are three forms of this silenol comes so that is uh, the free silenol free silenol okay then uh, you can see the, the vicinal and geminal vicinal and geminal wick and gem these three types of silicon we are going to observe like uh, we are seeing the structure of the silica in this way sio si like this okay and all oh group will be uh, here and here also like this oh group is like this and finally you can see like this so this is how we can see that the silenol is been uh, is been uh, is structured in this way if you see the free silenol so this side what we are observing here there is no bond here so only single utan so this is uh, called as a free silenol and uh, if you see there on the two different atoms this two oh group is there so we call it as a wick or vicinal and on single atom you can see the two oh group is bound so this we call a geminal so like this uh, gem so like this this uh, uh, silenol has the three uh, forms of this uh, uh, three forms here that is the free silenol vicinal or uh, geminal okay this is what about the first uh, uh, adsorbent that is silen now if you see the size uh, of the particle so it should be around 15 micrometer okay 15 uh, micrometer sign micron or it is called 15 micron okay micron size uh, uh, particle size uh, with the uh, size range from 5 to 40 5 to 40 micron so this is a range of the particle size which is ranges from 5 to 40 micron okay and it is used uh, to separate the carbohydrates okay the silica is used to separate the carbohydrates then uh, glycosides okay then also alkaloids alkaloids okay essential oils essential oils like this okay amino acids sugars sugars 
so these all things is can be separated by use of the silica gel the second important comes is alumina second adsorbent important comes for tls is alumina which is uh, denoted by the al2o3 aluminum oxide al2o3 and it is prepared uh, by calcination okay calcination by the process metallurgical process so that is a um, calcination process uh, by heating uh, aloh thrice aluminum hydroxide okay at 500 degree centigrade so when you heat this aloh thrice at 500 degree centigrade you are going to result with this alumina and this alumina is also of three types found that is your neutral acidic and basic okay? this is very much important neutral acidic and basics okay so if you want to go for the neutral so you just heat it with distilled water okay so you get uh, the neutral if you want acidic you go with uh, acid treatment for 24 hours you get uh, acidic if you want to basic you go for basic treatment of aluminum for 24 hours you get the basic okay so why we want to do this is because uh, you can see that uh, it is helpful for separation of uh, different analytes okay and uh, now as uh, the neutral alkali bonded compounds okay al plus 3 for neutral if you take the neutral alumina so al plus 3 is bonded on the surface okay so al plus the active site on the surface and if you go for acidic uh, so it is somewhat oh will be the active sites on the surface and if you go for basic okay so basic has o minus 2 okay pero peroxo type of uh, or o minus 2 form of uh, 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 surface active sites on the surface of the uh, of the adsorbent so these these are going to help for the uh, adsorption uh, criteria when we go for the uh, experiment okay so this is what and as usual uh, the neutral uh, if you see the neutral they are helping for the analkali bonded compounds okay uh, and uh, you can see for the acidic so active compounds acidic separate as uh, like a neutral or acidic compound for acidic so neutral compound can be separated as well as acidic uh, type of active compounds can be uh, separated okay so likewise uh, uh, in basic so we can see that basic compounds has been separated very nicely so like this depending on our uh, uh, conditions we can uh, make the uh, alumina as so, uh, alumina substrate uh, adsorbent in a different in a different system okay either it may be neutral or acidic or basic similarly the third one is magnesia so this is magnesia so this is also used as a very best adsorbent for the stationary phase which is noted as mgo magnesium oxide and uh, it has been finally divided uh, with the uh, also filtered okay filter aid with the help of filter aid it has been placed on the uh, on the on the stationary phase uh, as a, used as a stationary phase now if you see uh, this uh, the next one uh, which is very much used to as a st uh, stationary phase is a uh, calcium and magnesium silicate calcium and magnesium silicate this also is used as a very good stationary phase in most of the tlc that is your calcium silica sio4 or magnesium sio3 so this is a calcium silicate and magnesium silicate and this is used mainly for separation of sugar okay this is used mainly for separation of the uh, sugars likewise uh, if you go for next one some organic uh, adsorbents are also used in tlc's okay organic adsorbents like uh, you can see cellulose and charcoal cellulose and charcoal so these are very good adsorbent okay which is used as uh, organic adsorbents and uh, this is uh, cellulose you can see is uh, very faster than the paper chromatography in paper chromatography cellulose play important role but in this uh, yeah, the result is very good here is using of the uh, of cellulose here and uh, the main uh, this is adsorbed moisture okay on the surface uh, and it is based on the partition chromatography partition chromatography okay so it's very good uh, adsorbent of the moisture also okay and uh, uh, it is sometimes also used in uh, the ion exchange type of uh, uh, resins ion exchange resins also it is uh, used okay so this is what about the uh, can say about uh, <coughs> the cellulose and uh, charcoal so charcoal also is used as one of the organic uh, adsorbents so this is a uh, very good high capacity okay high capacity of all if you see all the adsorbent this charcoal is having high capacity of adsorption so this is what okay it's having high capacity of the adsorption and is used for the separation of uh, mostly aromatic compounds aromatic compounds so this is used for separation charcoal for the most of the aromatic uh, compounds okay now 
<coughs> now we will go for the solvents <coughs> now this is what is the stationary phase for the TLC now we will go for the uh, solvents okay what are the solvents used in the TLCs so these solvents uh, is very much important uh, which is acting as a mobile phase okay so usually high polar uh, should be avoided so if you go uh, to see that the high polar nature should be somewhat avoided okay so this is what we have to see for the mobile phase because the high uh, polar decreases the addition if you take the high polar it decreases the addition capacity okay uh, of the analyte uh, of the stationary phase so that is one case and second case more than two solvents composition should be avoided so we should not take more than two solvent composition this should be avoided okay this also is very much important so you can take up the most uh, uh, two solvents suitable mixing solvents necessary but not more than two because uh, uh, because the phase there may be the phase change okay so more than two means there is a chance of phase change at different temperatures because we are performing uh, at different temperatures so if you use more than two solvents the what will happen there may be this change in the phase and you may not get a good uh, separation so that's why this is what thing you have to keep in the mind before choosing the uh, different solvents <coughs> as a mobile phase now uh, if you see in uh, TLC the different solvents you starts from n uh, hexane okay so where the polarity index is taken as zero polarity index is taken as zero for n hexane and water which ends last is taken as around uh, if you see the index it is around 9 so this is what about the polarity index of water and uh, hexane and in between different uh, solvents come uh, these are the standards now if you want to go for poor polarity index hexane stops and if you go for a very strong polarity index so water stands uh, much here and then different solvents come uh, after this like uh, ccl4 carbon tetrachloride okay then toluene carbon tetratoiline xylene benzene okay diethyl ether this also can be used as a good solvent then dichloroethane dichloroethane okay then one butanol propanol one butanol one propanol two propanol methanol two propanol methanol ethanol methanol ethanol acetone okay acetonyl uh, or acetonitril acetonitril acetic acid dmso okay uh, so this is some and we can see water so which having nine if you see the polarity of uh, this polar this one right from uh, ccl4 the carbon tetrachloride having 1.7 polarity index then toluene 2.3 xylene 2.5 benzene 2.7 diethylator 2.8 okay then 3.7 dichloroethylene 1 butanol 3.9 propanol 3 point or 4 like this it, it goes on like this 5.1 methanol is 5.1 methanol okay mm, then ethanol 5.2 acetone 5.4 5.4 acetone so like this so this is how the polarity index of different solvents uh, is been uh, is been given here uh, which is used during the uh, TLC and now the main thing here is selection of okay selection of the mobile phase selection of the mobile how to select all the mobile phase here so the first step here is to find the standard uh, selection here that means two selection you have to do that is one polar solvent and one non-polar like this or you can take polar methanol okay and uh, non-polar you can take it as uh, n hexane n hexane like this so this is how you have to select first okay and you have to perform the TLC okay sample and you have to put on this uh, TLC a sample has been put in the form of like this okay and you have to take this uh, solvent here so n butanol and here and this is your sample plate and uh, you are seeing that this is running now like this so, so mobile phase and this is learning okay now uh, now you have to see the second point here uh, the sample here is taken and it is mixed and it is kept here and you can see that it has been done now if you see uh, if you increase or decrease the polarity uh, so we are going to get the analyte separated uh, of the compound okay so along with this the acidifier and basifier is used okay so this will help for the better separation uh, both so for example if you want to go for basic thing you use acidifier and if you want to go for acidic separation you use basifier okay this is what vice versa so this acts as a pairing effect and have the good separation 
uh, during the uh, during the experiment okay and you have to see that whatever the two solvents uh, you are using they should be very miscible so they should not have the phase here phase formation they should be miscible each other okay that thing you have to uh, you have to check it and run the uh, tlc okay and uh, if uh, after doing all the things uh, if you see that uh, suppression is not getting properly or you are not getting spots properly okay so what you have to do you have to change this now okay you have to change this uh, combination and you have to go for another combination this is a combination you failed then go for another combination and run all the things whatever procedure is there again you have to do you have to take a different ratios or you have to change the ratio like this so trial and uh, trial and error method is more here so to get a better suppression at one ratio or one uh, combination you are going to see that there is a better suppression and this is how uh, you can select that combination and you can perform the TLC experiment okay so hope you understood this today's video regarding the different solvents used in the TLC the solvents as well as the uh, you are used uh, the different uh, stationary phase uh, for the TLC running okay so this is how in the next video we will go for the next concept of the chromatography thank you